In this video, I'm going to do a quick introduction to React.js. We're going to look at the key concepts behind React, why it's a good idea to use React, and some example code to get a feel for what it looks like. React is an open source JavaScript library for building user interfaces. It was created by Facebook and released back in 2013. Um, all the code and the documentation is available at this website. Since its release three years ago, React has grown to be one of the most popular front-end libraries in use, both for web and mobile apps. The key concept behind React is the idea of replacing front-end view templates with simple reusable components written in JavaScript. For example, in Rails, instead of writing all your UI code in ERB or Haml templates, you would create JavaScript components which build up your app's UI. Let's look at an example. This is Google Calendar, a very common, popularly used web app. Here we could look at how, how we would build this in React. Now each of these colored boxes can be considered as React components. And React has this idea of nesting components. So the red bo box here could be a container component which contains all of the other components inside the app. The blue box could be a component for the month and the green one would be a component for each week, for each row of days in the week. And inside that is the purple component which is for a specific day. And then inside that each appointment for that day. Now notice the green component, for example, would be reusable because the same component could be used for each week of the month. Similarly, the month component would be reusable because the same month component could be used for each month of the year. Similarly for the day component. What's interesting about React is that instead of each of these bits of UI being a simple HTML or template markup code, it turns them into simple JavaScript objects. Each component is a JavaScript function which returns markup as its value. What this allows us to do is that because it's JavaScript code, JavaScript functions essentially, it allows us to reason about the UI and reuse code in a much more efficient manner. This will become much clearer when we actually look at specific code examples later in this lesson. Now before we jump into looking at the code, let's quickly recap why React is a good idea. <clears throat> there are four main reasons I think React is such a great idea and why it's become so popular. Number one, it's easily maintainable. Now we've all seen as web projects grow in size, especially the front-end JavaScript code becomes very messy. You soon end up in a mess of spaghetti code with all sorts of UI interactions and data and state manipulation strewn all over the place. React allows us to replace the spaghetti code with well-structured and logical UI components. Right from structuring the code files down to how the code actually works, React allows code to be much more maintainable, especially when working in teams. Secondly, React code is declarative as opposed to imperative. So instead of telling the computer how to do something, instead of specifying every single step of how to handle user interaction, when a user clicks a button, what to update, which bit of the UI to change, we simply tell React what we would like for data to do. And React automatically refreshes the UI and handles all the UI transitions. You can think of it a bit like SQL which is a declarative language, not imperative. You simply, def you simply define your query in terms of what data you're looking for, and then the SQL database figures out the most efficient way to get that answer to you. That's what React does for UIs. Third, React allows us to build faster UIs. One of the main underlying concepts behind React is the idea of the virtual DOM. A copy of the DOM, React creates a virtual representation of the browser DOM and does all operations on the virtual DOM instead of directly manipulating the DOM every time the data changes. Whenever the data changes, say from a user action or from the server, 
React creates a new version of the virtual DOM and it then takes the old version of the virtual DOM and the new one and finds the difference between them and only then makes the minimum amount of change that it needs to make to the actual DOM. Because making changes to the actual browser DOM is very expensive and slow. By minimizing those changes, React really manages to make things a lot faster. Finally, React allows us to write cross-platform code. Instead of write once and run everywhere, the React community has adopted the concept of learn once and write anywhere. Once you learn how to write web UIs using React, you can use the same style of code, the same structure to write native code for mobile apps. There's very little difference in how they, they work. And Facebook has in fact found that for some of their apps, they can share between 80 to 90% of code between their Android and iOS apps. So this allows you to write a lot less code and achieve a lot more through it. Especially for web developers looking to get into mobile development, this is one of the key features of React which makes it more attractive than other competing libraries and frameworks. Now that's a lot of theory and you may be feeling a bit overwhelmed with all these different ideas and we have barely touched the surface of all the important concepts behind React. So let's, let, let's look at some actual code to g give you a feel for what React actually looks like. So here I've got some code which does a simple hello world onto the web page. This is on CodePen. The link for this bit of code will be in the, in the lesson notes. So don't worry about copying or writing down this code for now. Just Let's just look at it. All this code does is creates a very basic React component, which is then used to simply display the word hello world on the, on a web page. So there are three panes here. The, the, on the left, we have the HTML code for the page. We have some JavaScript on the right here, and the actual web page is displayed down here. The HTML is very simple. We have inside the body we have one single div tag with an ID of app. And this is the React code which then prints hello world in that on that page. What we are doing here is creating a variable called hello, which is created by calling react.create class, which provides a render method which then in turn creates the actual markup for displaying hello world. So this bit of code creates a React component and then here reactom.render uses that component and says render that component called hello inside this div with an ID of app. So reactom.render the name of the component hello and then the second argument tells it where that component needs to be rendered on the page. Remember, I mentioned earlier, React creates components which are essentially functions which return markup. So here, we have this render function inside this React component. Each React component must have a render function. That is what returns the actual UI code, the UI markup. So here, our component has just one method, one function called render, which returns this bit of markup. Now you might be wondering, why is there HTML inside of JavaScript? This is called JSX. This is one of the new things that React has introduced. So JSX is basically a syntax extension for JavaScript. It's a way to turn HTML markup into JavaScript objects. It's not compulsory to use JSX with React, but it is highly recommended and almost everyone uses it because it makes using React a lot easier. It may feel a bit strange at first, but you get used to it very quickly. Initially, JSX may seem just like another template language, but in fact, it comes with the full power of JavaScript. And as you use and see more of its properties, you'll, you'll realize that it's actually very powerful, much more powerful than a normal template language. Now, since React components are functions, we can pass arguments to them. For example, in this case, instead of showing hello world, say we want to pass a value, a name of a person to this component. 
we can do that in React using something called props. So here I'm going to change this code and type in hello name equals John. And now up here I want to remove world and replace that with this dot props dot name. And let that refresh. There you go. The name displayed there is John. I can change that to Mary and the page refreshes shows hello Mary. So props are a simple way for passing data to components. In our example here the name is an attribute whose value we are setting here to Mary and then that is passed to the hello component which accesses it through this.props. So props are essentially what are props are to components what arguments are to functions. They can be used inside inside the JSX code using curly braces. So anything inside curly braces in JSX is an expression, values to an expression. So for example here if I just write 2 plus 2 that should have value to 4. But so that's the use of curly braces but in this case we are just using that to pass a, a value, a prop value. So that's props. Next we're going to look at the concept of state. Now state is a way for components to maintain internal state data. Any non-trivial app is going to have some states. For, for example, even if you're just building a to-do list app, you need to store the, the list items, whether they're completed or not, and the order of the items, the date of the items. All of this data is the state of inside your app. And React components can maintain their internal state data. It can be accessed via this.state, just like we access this.props. And when a component state data changes, the rendered markup is automatically refreshed by invoking render. Now let's look at an example for state. Now we've taken our hello, hello world example. We've added a form field, a form text input field above the text hello world, and what we wanted to do is whenever the whatever the user types in there, that's what is displayed as displayed with hello. So if you type hello, if you type John, then it's reflected as hello John. So let's look at how we would implement state in this example. So here we're going to add, we're going to change this. We're going to add a form and an input field. And let's say now here one thing I would like to mention is that each React component in the render method needs to be enclosed within a single element. So the outermost element there can only be one. So here we are enclosing everything inside a single div tag. And that's a requirement of React. If you don't do that, then, then the component doesn't work. Just keep that in mind. When you write the render function, all the markup needs to be enclosed within a single element. Here we're using a div tag. So now here we've added an input field. Now whenever I type, the user types a string in that, that should be displayed here. So instead of hello Mary, it should say hello John. So we're going to implement that by using React state. So here what we're going to do is add a method, an attribute on change. We're going to call it this dot change name. And we're going to add that method, that function here, change name. This dot set 
state. Name E dot where E is the event we're passing. So every time this changes, this function is called, which calls this dot set state. Now this dot set state is the only way you can change state in React. This is known as an explicit mutation. This is the only way you you will change state in React. So we're going to change the value of name to e dot target of value. And here we are also going to set the value to this dot state dot name. Same as this. We're not going to use the prop. We're going to use the state. We don't need to pass this attribute anymore because we are allowing the user to type in the name. Ah yes, we need to initialize the state. So we're going to write another function called get initial state which essentially sets the state at the beginning of the let's say mark uh -huh. So yes, we need to set the initial state. React expects us to set initialize the state. Typically it's used to set a null state, so you would typically just set this to a, an empty string. But in this case, let's say we set it to an actual value, um, say world. <coughs> and that's what the page is going to initialize to. And then when the user types in this field, every time that field value changes on change attribute calls this dot change name which calls this dot set state and sets the 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 name in the state to e dot target dot value where e is the event and the target is this input field whose value is set to this dot state dot name so this is a very simple trivial example of how react how state works in React. We're going to see more complex examples as we build something non-trivial in this in this course. Uh, but this is just to get a basic idea of how this works. You can see a slightly more interesting example of state on the React homepage. Here, this is an example of a timer, which displays seconds elapsed starting from zero. You will notice that this code looks slightly different from the way we've written it. In our example, this is because these examples are using ECMAScript 6, ES6, whereas we are using the previous version of JavaScript. We will move on to using ES6, but just as an introduction, I wanted to show you something simple. So that covers some of the very basic concepts of React. Hopefully you got a feel for what is involved in writing React code. But there's a lot more to cover, and we will do as we move along through the course, in all in the context of using React within Rails. Some of the things we are going to look at is how to use external plugins and add-ons with React code, how to use Webpack, how to use ES6 instead of ES5 or previous versions of JavaScript, look, take a look at React Router and also, also managing state with Flux. Next, we're going to see how to get started actually using React inside a Rails app.